All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and I have a very exciting podcast for you guys today. I sat down with Matthew Weekly from the Icon Garage YouTube channel, and we talk about a bunch of things in this podcast, mainly his FD RX-7. He bought it from Chris from B is for Build, so if you've seen that build on YouTube, then you will love this because we talk all about how he got the car from Chris, what he's done to it since. We also talk a lot about the rotary community, what it's like owning an RX-7. We talk about his Datsun, as well as we talk about his car history, how he came up, a lot of Fast and Furious, stuff like that. So I think you guys will really enjoy this podcast if you enjoy the topics I just mentioned. If you are just listening, there is a video portion on YouTube at youtube.com slash shooting cars. If you're watching and you'd like to take this podcast on the go, we are on Spotify as well as most other places that you can find podcasts like iTunes, Stitcher, things like that. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast and don't forget to leave your thoughts down below. Hey, Zach. <laughs> I've right. never done this with these microphones before. So it's a whole new setup. So you're the first of the first. Yeah. So like in what I do when we do something like this, we call ourselves pioneers. Pioneers? We're pioneering today. I heard a little bit of the Southern drawl there when you said pioneers. Maybe. You know, it's funny. I, I, uh, like I told you, I don't, I haven't always lived in Kentucky. And uh, my grandma always will tell me, oh, you sound like you're from Kentucky. And it's like, <laughs> I might pick up an accent. It's not like my, like, you don't notice it as much, you know, like as the person talking. But right. my family will say that, yeah, he's been out in Kentucky a long time. And it's you're like starting oh, to get that drawl. It happens a little bit. So I, I, I always wish I had like a cool accent growing up. I always wish I like I tried out a, a southern accent for a little bit. But being from Chicago yeah. doesn't really fly when you start just randomly having one. Yeah, I don't know if I would. I mean, southern accents have their place, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I say the West Coasters talk really fast, but they're clear. Like you hear yeah. what they say like Denver and like the Colorado area, like mm -hmm. they have the most just plain, like there's nothing subtle about their accent. And of course you've got the Northern accents. Like I can pick somebody from Wisconsin, like almost instantly. So yeah, yeah I don't know. I mean, if I were going to have a cool accent, I'd be like British or something, you know? Yeah. Except British accents. We're, uh, my girlfriend and I were talking about this. Like they used to be super sophisticated, but now in pop culture, it's kind of like the dumb accent. Yeah. Because like there's a lot of British shows that are like t like too hot to handle. You ever heard of this show on Netflix? No. Okay. No, it's it's a stupid game show we've been watching where uh, basically the whole objection is if you don't have sex for 30 days, then you uh, you win a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and they're all British and they're all like, oh my god, can't do it. You know, like yeah. things like that. So yeah, I will say that. You know, like in movies and like pop culture, a lot of times the baddie is uh, a yeah. British. You've got that British accent. And they all drive Jaguars. Jags. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but sometimes when like the girls talk or females talk, it kind of catches you off guard. Yeah. Because you know, like their language and like the way the parts and the things that they talk about. And it's just like, it's, uh, you know, you do pick up on their accent. It seems yeah. like a lot thicker than like when you think about like the. I like how we're talking about accents, and I just had a voice crack like I was 14 years yeah, old. It it's okay. Almost. It's this weather. I'm gonna blame the weather. It's been raining for what seems like a fortnight here. Yes. This, and uh, this has been special. So this is Matthew from Icon Garage. Um, super excited to have you on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. We're in front of this beautiful FD that we will get to in a second. Um, but I just want to start off and talk about why are you into cars? What got you into cars and what got you into making YouTube videos about cars? So I think the first question about getting into cars, like, um, my, I had an uncle that lived, my dad's little brother lived with us for a lot of my younger life. And he was a mechanic. And I remember him working in the driveways when we lived in Colorado. He would, like, work in the driveway. Um, it could be the simplest thing, like changing a battery or doing an oil change. And we had this, like, little wooden step ladder, and I'd just mm -hmm. be sitting there watching him do it. And so I think my first exposure to, like, cars were more than just something you would drive. Right. It was probably when I was, like, you know, five years old. And, uh, you know, I've, like... I was huge at that point. I was a huge matchbox car collector. So like I had like probably hundreds, if not thousands of matchbox cars. I had the micro matchbox car or the micro machines, micro machines. Yeah. I had those as a kid and they're making a comeback. If you go to Walmart, you can buy some micro machines now. So I had, I mean, I had like the little plastic racetracks all over our basement and I just, yeah. you know, so I was huge at that point. I was fixated on cars, even at a young age. And like, 
you know, I can't say my family ever owned an interesting car. Like mm-hmm. my dad drove F two fifties and had a Harley and my mom had a, the green Taurus station wagon that everybody had back in the nineties. We had a Taurus growing up. It was so, a white one, you know, and then I think it, I'm, I'm, I'm that age that I was 16 in, uh, 2001. Oh, wow. Wow. You are. Yeah. That's like, the so, year. yeah. You know, even then I had a Ford, uh, um, Ford, uh, 1986 Ford Ranger is my, it was a cheap beater oh, that my dad had bodies. Yes. Oh, I love them so much. It was a $200 truck. So that will kind of paint the picture of what I was dealing with. So anyway, <laughs> you but, got uh, all 200 bucks out of it. <laughs> oh, for sure. Actually it ended up being a great buy in all things yeah. considered. But, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, when I was, f- you know, 14, 15 and here in Kentucky, you have to go through the permit process before you can drive and right. all that stuff. So, you know, my, um, uh, my mom got remarried and he, uh, my, my uh, stepdad had had a history. He had like old Camaros and Ford trucks and things like that. And so he was a car guy a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, so when, you know, as I'm coming of age to get my car and I get the truck and of course my, my pa- at the time, my family was not very, they didn't really have any money. And I think for a lot of people to get into cars, it's kind of a necessity thing. Like yeah. I have to learn how to fix my brakes. I have to, if learn I want to go to work tomorrow, I got to yeah. fix this alternator. Yeah. You know, the cost of sending it to a mechanic or having, you know, somebody have your car and all that stuff. So I think I, I became a, a necessity mechanic mm-hmm. when I was 15 years old, trying to convert this $200 truck to something I could drive every day. Yeah. So then fast and furious came out and blew my mind. <laughs> you know, here I am in Kentucky at this point, and I just saw this movie, and you know, of course, it'll go down as kind of like an iconic situation. For, of course, yeah. For I mean, you cinema. are the perfect age. Yeah. So I remember. That movie. I remember the next time I got in my truck after watching that movie, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to see if, how fast it. You know, it was like yeah. it's like a trigger went off, and so from that point on, I was like, my, I, if I was hooked on cars at that time, and then I watched Fast and Furious. Like it just went like to 120% right, right. more than that. It was just so at that. So we started, um, and in my local community where my parents lived at the time and I went to high school, um, street cars, like muscle cars and things like that were pretty popular, but, uh, mini trucks were all the rage. So everybody had little S 10 low riders yeah. and, um, where I'm from the West coast, I, one of the, actually prior to being 15 years old, I loved low riders. The hydraulics, okay. yeah. the, uh, so being from the West Coast, that was something I was always like. I, I would, I remember when the internet started coming out, I would go on to lowrider.com <laughs> and it would take like 20 minutes to load up a single picture of a lowrider. You know, heaven forbid somebody call yeah. the house and kick you off. Oh, the yeah, I'm old by the way. Um, uh, so anyway, so yeah, my car, my love of cars is like all over the map. I don't really dis- uh, discriminate when it comes to cars, you know. Maybe I'd probably say I'm not like into like the big rock crawling and all that kind of stuff. Fair. I can yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Um, a lot but, of engineering goes yeah. into those things. But like low riders and uh, sports cars and muscle cars and antiques, like, you know, every time you show your little, uh, your Model A in the yeah. background, I, I think there's actually one. We didn't come that way when we came here, but there's one sitting in a tree that's been there as far as I can remember just rusting. Down, really? the, down the hill here and I've always wanted to stop by and ask the guy what the deal was but I don't know if it's like a family heirloom that just sat yeah, there and got rotted that's, I'd but, love uh, to see that that's really cool so uh might be underwater today with all the rain we've oh had my God. so yeah, so anyway terrible Fast and Furious um them at, you know of course my next car was a 1995 Honda Civic just, gotta be I mean yeah. like it has to be so I thought I was super cool yeah and uh I poured you know I every every second I wasn't working or in school I was just out wrenching on it or did you put neon under it i did not I, ah. you know, i'm not really fa- i'm not that's not kind of i don't know i guess i like to be subtle like surprise i people. actually hate neon but like yeah. at the time like i feel like everything looked better with neon but i had the, i had the huge fart can coming out the back oh, yeah. and i had uh i got a custom set of like alteza headlights and tail lights and you know put a huge sound i'm a, i love car audio so mm-hmm. that, was, that was the other thing i got into big when i was in high school was car audio and we built custom, you know, car audio systems for those mini trucks and things we were talking about, my Ford Ranger, all that stuff. So anyway, um, but that was my college car. So I was like, I couldn't have a lot of downtime with it, but I drove the crap out of it. I, I that, Even today, I, I joke because I forget how many miles I put on that car. And then I gave it to my brother um, when I, I, I still own the car, but I had gotten another car just because yeah. I needed something a little bit more room. And I gave that one to my brother when he turned 16. He drove it forever. And then... We kept it in the family and my stepdad drove it, you know, he drives about 60 miles a day to work and he drove it forever. 
And so <laughs> it's like, I still like to imagine somebody's out there driving it around. Probably with like 410,000 yeah. miles and on it. The yeah. only thing, the only problem I ever had with that car was a CV joint in the front axle. Hmm. As long as we owned it, yeah. we did oil changes and wheels and stuff like that. The, never had an oil leak. Um, the AC always worked. 95 is EG, right? No, it was the, it, well, it, no, it was after that. It was the D, D, DX. Or is that EK? I'm, I'm thinking of the generation of yeah, so Civic. It would have been. I forget been, what 95 is. I thought that was EG. It was the first year, I think, of the EK. Okay. And so I could be wrong on that, but, um, but it, it was the DX model, which is the base model, because mm-hmm. then you had the EX, which had, you know, power this and that so yeah. the dx actually had direct it didn't have power steering so it felt you know it was just it just yeah. felt super cool yeah. for you know probably having like 90 horsepower you know so oh yeah old, so old d series yeah so that's that's you know largely fast and furious and had a huge influence on my life but you know i was in the cars before that and and uh you know as i became an adult i was able to buy a little bit nicer cars so mm-hmm. i got into bmws so I've, I've had you know several bmws or this is my I've had this one for five years, and then I had one previous to that for five years. So I've been, you know, riding my BMWs for the last both three series. Yeah. So the okay. previous one was a coupe, and then okay. I, I told my wife I needed a, a dad car, oh, so yeah. I got the guy get the Ford. Those one. are what F eighties, F thirty, F thirties. Okay. So it was the, um, yeah, it was the compromise because yeah. you know this is the turbo and all that stuff and. I really like the look of these cars. I think these will go down as like one of the best looking three series there was. Yeah. So this is the sport or the M sport package. So it's got a little bit different bumper and I've done some cosmetics on it a little bit, but yeah, the, the F eight or the F 30 M threes are pretty sharp. I'm a huge fan of the E 92 M three E 92 M three. I drove one down in St. Louis a few years ago. I loved that car. The four liter V eight is yeah. really cool. So anyway, but then, um, I got the RX seven back in 2018 mm-hmm. and again, sort of that fast and furious tie in. Right. But it was, you know, that this, for those who don't know, this was, um, the car that was on B is for build. Right. So Chris had imported it and he was the one that did the bulk of the you know paint job and the body kit and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm, as a consumer, I mm-hmm. have been on YouTube literally since the day it was in was out because right. in 20, 2005 I was in college and you know 2003 or 4 I can't remember if it was end of 2003 early 2004 you know Facebook came out and um, then in 2005 YouTube came out so you know again it was something I was right in the mix of something that was coming out so I've been on YouTube as a consumer since 2005 I mean it's probably my main source of information you know I yeah whether I'm trying to catch up on some quick sports stuff or, yeah. or news um, but anyway, so I, I follow lots of car builds and one day Chris had mentioned, um, c- Chris tends to build a lot of cars mm-hmm. and then just probably like a lot of people that have a lot of cars, you just don't have time to mess with. All yeah. Them. Which is always like, it's so sad to see is that you see all these cool builds and then I know he has like a back lot or something and he like, it was like a row of these awesome yeah. cars and he's like, I drove that one this month. Like, yeah. So and you know i'm I'm already hooked and and love rx7s and 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 for me it's the engineer i'm an engineer so the the engineering of the the rotary engine and you know the concept of something being different and unique intrigues me when Mm -hmm. it comes to just about anything you know yeah of course and uh so anyway i i he in a video in passing was like "Eh, if anybody wants to buy the rx7 just reach out to me and i sent him an email and i said hey chris i saw your video um I've been actually thinking about starting a YouTube channel. I think it'd be great for me to kind of pick up where you left off and, and use this as a, a, you know, my channel. And, um, he emailed me back and he was like, yeah. So we quickly came to an agreement on a price. Of course, I'm, I'm buying this site unseen other than the videos. Right. Right. And he assures me, you know, there's no, he, he gives me a rundown of what he knows the issues are. And then of course, you know, can see what he did on the, on the video. So, you know, we, we made an, an agreement on the price, I sent him the money and I had to figure out the shipping so that he got it on a, uh, a hauler in, I think it's in Portland. So then it shipped all the way across the United States to me and I got it and, um, it got a little, it wasn't his fault, but the shipping mm-hmm. company was a little yeah. bit, a little hard on the car yeah. on its way in. <laughs> and so I got it and, uh, um, yeah, so I, 
you know, it, it had some issues, like the brakes were an issue, the clutch was an issue, it's got a little bit of an oil leak. Um, so those are things I started tackling then. So uh, I had been on YouTube before that, as I, I had thought I would be cool one time doing like a technology review channel. And so I, if you search it, I'm not even going to mention it, but you could probably find me. <laughs> in a, I have a couple old, like, yeah. I, my first YouTube video I posted in fourth grade. So my, almost ago. my entire school experience is on YouTube somewhere that I've never said. Oh, wow. And I don't think I've – I think most of the videos are still public. So yeah. I, I know what you mean of uh, if someone really did some digging, they would find yeah. some real squeaky voice videos. And, and it's it's like, you know, I, I leave them up there because it's like I try to make the content – something that was useful mm -hmm. and I'm like, of course this it, today it's not useful because it's so outdated but at the time <laughs> so I just like I just kind of like made it fade off into an existence and then um you know where I lived on the west coast out on the beach you know, uh, my family had always had fish tanks so I was really big in the saltwater reef tanks mm -hmm. so I started a channel uh about that topic at some point in time probably like I don't know 2000 that would have been 2010 11 somewhere in there so I dabbled in YouTube over the years and then you know, you're just kind of feeling your way through it at the time. And so anyway, um, my getting this car and you know, one of the things I thought about was, um, it's not a, it's not a, uh, get rich quick or it's not a, um, I'm sure the amount of people that are successful and make a significant living off YouTube is very small percentage wise. Oh yeah. Just yeah. like probably, you know, you, you can like a sports, you know, yeah. how many people end up being in the pros Right. You know, and thing. even in the pros, there's some people that make not a lot of money even being in the pros. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a very small percentage. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I figured, I said, I told my wife, I said, you know, but if the trade-off is, is that I can do a hobby that I love, which is building cars and, mm -hmm. and you know, re restoring cars, that kind of thing, and I get a little bit of monetary kickback, then yeah. it'll offset that mm -hmm. um that cost because I mean building cars is extremely expensive and and I couldn't have picked a worse car to start with <laughs> than an RX-7. Um, I, I think about that all the time. I always think like why couldn't I just post video game videos? Just buy one $60 game yeah. and milk it for a thousand videos. Why do I have to choose yeah. rotaries? <laughs> yeah I mean it, that, it it's sad like yeah. it's so relatable and sad that um but, you know, that's everybody. I mean, even if yeah. you're not on YouTube and you're building a car, you've got that those expenses. So, you know, I try to sell it to my wife and just say, hey, <laughs> you know, if you let me, you know, invest my time and energy into this process, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be living my life a little bit in the public eye. Not that I'm famous, but just like my house. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. I try not to include like my daughter and stuff like that. You know, I try to keep it as private as I can and, um, you know, make sure I'm hiding address labels on yeah, packages and all that a, kind of stuff. It's a very interesting uh, line you have to walk with that stuff. Um, especially like I've gotten comments of people like pointing out things and like, Oh, you're right here. And yeah. I'm like, ah, I don't love that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so, but it's not uncommon to be even out. Like, I mean, we do go to cars and coffee quite a bit. And of course yeah. that's a crowd that is all there. But I mean, I've been in the middle of a grocery store and someone come up and knock me. Hey, you're, you're that guy from Icon mm -hmm. Garage and stuff. So, you know, you are putting your life out there and you have to accept all the good and bad that comes with that. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I sold it to my wife. I said, we're going to be, I'm going to, I want to do this. I want to be serious about it. And, uh, primarily, you know, even if I'm making a hundred dollars a month, that's a hundred dollars less I'm paying out of pocket. So, you yeah, know, if you're going to be doing this stuff anyway, yeah. if I'm going to build cars no matter what. Yeah. Let's get some scratch at least for it, yeah. you know? So, but Pay it's for the shipping sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a, it's a learning process because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people criticize me about putting the RX seven and, and, you know, first people's thoughts immediately are, Oh, he just wants to ride the coattails of Chris as be as for build. Mm -hmm. And Chris is an interesting guy because I think people have a, a miss. It's the internet, right? Right. Everybody has, a, everybody yeah. has opinion. Yeah. But Chris is a, I think if you like go back and watch some of his earlier videos, he's a, um, a, a software programmer and he's interesting. like, interesting. I actually yeah. didn't know that about him. And so I think he developed software and apps and things like that, but he's, um, just like everybody else, he, mm -hmm. he after work he comes home and tinkers in his garage or plays with whatever project he's got going on, and he's learning as he's doing it. He's not mm -hmm. a professional mechanic and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So I think that led to, and of course Chris takes stuff 
like the RX-7, putting the Rocket Bunny kit on it right. or all that stuff. So I think he takes stuff to a little bit higher level that kind of, I think, rubs some people the wrong way. But it's like, it's his build. It's he's doing what he wants to do. And that's that's fine. Yeah, I think that's the a, a really good point that you just touched on is that a lot of people expect us to be experts. Um, and we're not. If, like, it, it's very rare that someone's a, an expert from the automotive world and then they start making youtube videos it's yeah. usually the other way around not that they have no knowledge at all i think the only person that i can think of is scotty kilmer that's senile man um who started off as like a he had been a mechanic for 30 40 years and then started his screaming youtube channel yeah. um <laughs> man he's an interesting character yeah. but um yeah i i think you know that's a good point is that like we're just you know it, 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 we're just working on cars. Yeah. And so that put me in a very weird spot. Cause it was funny. I remember getting the car and I was like, okay, how do I do this? How do I make my first video? And you know, of course I'm like, well, maybe I need to kind of like introduce myself and see what happens. So mm -hmm. I made this stupid long video <laughs> that I talked so much that it was painful probably to watch, but I introduced myself, the cars. And then I took the RX seven on kind of really was my first drive. Mm -hmm. Cause I, you know, I ended up having to go through the whole process of actually getting it titled in the United States. Uh, Chris had, I guess Oregon has like a temporary, um, Oh, interesting. Like uh, what do they call it? Like a, not a temp tag, but like, yeah, they have like, it's like a, a 30 day window that you have and they give you a, oper a operator's permit or I don't know what it is, but okay. he yeah. basically had gone through and he, he was legally allowed to drive it, right? but then but it wasn't, yeah, yeah. but then he sold it to me. And so he didn't actually ever get a formal title from Oregon, which in Kentucky where I live, that's all they want is a form, a title and then they'll just transfer the title. So I ended up having to finish that process. So the, the, st the state and the County were good about letting me drive the car and, and they were in the process of, of doing all that. So, you know, anyway, um, so I did catch a lot of heat and that, that kind of, like, you know, talking about having to have thick skin and like the comments and you get it and stuff. And, you know, um, the fact that it wasn't registered or the fact that I bought the car from Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I was catching hate from people that were hating on Chris, people hating on me, people hating on me that I bought Chris's car. Yeah. And so like, it almost got, um, it put me in a weird spot cause I didn't want to have any bad blood with Chris. And it's like, you know, I, I, every time there was a bad comment, I tried to delete. I'm like, I'm not trying to censor my channel. Right. But I was just trying to like, I don't want one person to say, you know, something bad about me or Chris, and then it just spiraling this whole discussion in the comments. Right. So it, that put me in a weird, and it made me start questioning. I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't have got this car because now, you know, people don't understand. I'm not here trying to mooch off Chris. I, I want to build this RX-7. So it took yeah. a long time to get out from that um, shadow, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, ultimately, I don't know where my channel would be. I, I'm, you know, a little over 10,000 subscribers. So it's, it's what it is. But you know, I don't know if I'd be at a thousand today or if I'd be at 20,000, it's hard to tell what would have really happened. Yeah. But that, that's, in, I, you know, I wouldn't have expected people to hate on you for buying the car. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly genuinely would have been like, cause I actually did watch all the build videos of this car, which is like kind of cool, like now sitting in front of it. But when I saw your channel, your channel actually popped up, I think in the recommended videos from the RX seven build and like I, I was excited that this car is going to get like a new lease on life almost how like this story is going to continue instead of seeing it in the background of all of his videos sit in a back lot like pretty much every youtuber does they just have their back lot yeah. and then you see that build back there and you're like oh i remember watching like 18 hours of that car being built it's cool that it's you know hasn't moved in three months so yeah I, I was excited when i saw that you were actually going to pick up where he left off i thought that was really cool yeah and i don't want to paint a negative image i mean the internet is mad because I'm wearing a white t-shirt right now. I right, mean, that, that's, yeah. that's the facts, you know, I would say by and large, 80% of the people that watch my video were positive and supportive. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there were some extremes that I just banned from my channel. Cause it was just like, it just unnecessary. Um, and, and when you see comment, I, do you have notifications set up on your phone? I have, cause I, I turned them off like two years ago and it was the best thing I've ever done. Right. So I, I have the, um, what's it called? It's the YouTube studio. App. Yeah. 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 So I don't have, I don't receive, you know, dings or buzzes, okay. but you know, I'll go in there every once in a while and I, I do let it, you know, show me my recent comments mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I, I keep an eye on it. Cause you know, a lot of, at this point in time, I get lots of questions, people wanting help. Um, Hey, I saw you did this in your video. Can you like, what did you do or how'd you solve it? And so, um, 
there are a lot of times I want to interact with people and make sure that they're getting the response that they need. And so, yeah, but I, I turn off my, like, I don't get notified. I, I had it. It almost came through like a text message for me. It would say so-and-so yeah. said this. And, uh, I think the mind just sort of normally gravitates towards those negative comments. And so I think, uh, that's why a lot of that stuff sticks out. And yeah. And I, it, yeah. And I think you put out a video. Yeah. I was, I was about, really the, about to mention yeah. that, that I did like a way, way too long winded yeah. video yeah. <laughs> about it. But I think it is a serious thing because I know a lot of people that get affected by comments really hard Yeah, and it's something that the mind, the, the human brain is not used to hearing every single person's opinion at all points in the day. I will, I'll be up at three in the morning, you know, with a stomach ache or whatever, and I'll refresh it and people are currently commenting yeah. and they're usually saying nice things, but sometimes there's someone saying bad stuff and you're just not conditioned to be at three in the morning, you know, sitting on the toilet, seeing people yell at you. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, like I said, I, I don't, I personally don't necessarily get offended. I mean, mm -hmm. people comment about my weight or, you know, the way I hold a wrench or something. Yeah. I mean, it could be the most mundane thing. And, and, and I, I have to tell you how to hold that wrench. Yeah. And I have I to look know. at, I have to look at it as, yeah. you know, two, there's two ways to look at it. There's two ways, to ha two ways I think to handle that. One is ignore it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's probably what we do mostly, or I guess there's one way to not handle it. And that's engage you know, right. to like specifically get with them and start having a combative conversation. But there's been times where people will comment something and I try to understand where they're coming from. Like, and I'm not meaning to like sarcastically, but like if they say, I don't agree with the way you did this, I'll be like, okay, well, what would have been the better way to do it? Right. Because yeah. they may have a legitimate point or they right. may have knowledge that I don't have. <clears throat> so I'm always willing to accept someone else's opinion. So that, you know, it's, yeah. that's one of the hardest things. But I think as people like surely the Adam LZs and the yeah. um, Cletus McFarlands yeah. of the world, they never see or pay attention to a comment at this point. You know, I think they, they, the volume at which they probably are getting comments is ridiculous. So yeah, I think you do have to filter that out and not uh, um, pay too much attention to it. But mm -hmm. you know, part of the reason why I want to build my YouTube channel back to that whole topic real quick is that I want to help. I mm -hmm. want to uh, not say I'm an educator, but you know, like we were saying earlier, it, you, people are in their garages tinkering on their brakes or tinkering on whatever it is they're doing and they have a question mm -hmm. and they go to the internet or cause let's be, you know, factory service manuals are often, um, challenging uh, to yeah. understand and follow. Although shout out to Fox.ca. Yes, they yes. have a lot of the service manuals yes, on there. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. So like I, I want to engage with my audience and I mean, even, um, you know, a couple of days ago, somebody asked me a question. I forget what it was specifically, but, uh, you know, we had a little bit of a conversation back and forth about troubleshooting. Um, oh, their, their, their RX-7 was idling rough or something. And, you know, I'm not there to see it. So it really, it really reduces yes. my ability to yeah. help. But I'm like, hey, you might want to check. Um, you might have vacuum leak. You might have, you know, check I, all these different like things. Like auto reply vacuum leak. Yeah. So uh, I try, I want to help and I offer yeah, of to help people and, and stuff. So. Anyway, but yeah, so life on YouTube has been interesting and it's, yeah. it's had its pros and cons. And we were talking earlier, um, you know, about, you know, somewhat of the financials of it, but the bigger picture is that, you know, my goal of making it something that offsets my part, uh, expenses yeah. is not even close, but you know, I have gotten people reach out to me and say, Hey, I got this part yeah. and ship it to me. Um, I've, I've got to meet so many great people like you and, mm -hmm. and like, um, the rotary community community in particular is so close knit, um, you know, it's like we're a family at this point and, um, you know, I've gotten to meet people all over the country and, and have, uh, you know, correspondence with so many different people and, yeah. um, you know, Eeyore and all these, you know, there's just everybody, I could say yeah. a name and everybody that's in the rotary community knows who I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. And so, um, it's been really cool. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a way of life, I guess, if you own a rotary. Yeah. I No, I agree a hundred percent. And, uh, it is, it, it's a lot more tight knit than you'd think. Um, especially like, well, especially with the help of the internet and everything, but something you did touch on that I wanted to kind of expand on was, um, when people are like in their garages looking up stuff, I found the biggest thing is that whenever I have an issue, 
like, you know, I'll look it up. And it's always this forum post yeah. from 2006. And wherever the images were stored no longer houses those images. So it's just little blue question marks. And it's like, hey, I did this. Blue question mark, blue question mark, blue question mark. Yeah. And so that has been like the hardest, most frustrating part of working on an RX-7, I think. Yeah, because you always run into the most like random issue and, and it's so specific and you're just like i can't be the only one that's run into right. this and you'll you'll spend an hour searching around the internet and you'll find somebody that'll mention mention it and then like you said it, it's like the information just doesn't it's not evergreen sometimes yeah, yeah. But, uh, so yeah i mean it's uh you know youtube and and the cars and all that stuff's been an experience and i've learned a ton and uh it's uh you know i've i've failed you know, it's not the sexiest content, right? Doing a brake rebuild. Um, <laughs> but if I figure it helps a couple people, then I yeah. served myself and served them. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to make a calendar of brake replacements. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I get that. But it's 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 hard to view it as a service, but it is. It, it, it's a very weird feeling, yeah. um, especially like it, at least for like reviews and stuff. I'll have people comment, oh, I went out and bought this car because of your review. And I'm like, that's it's cool it's obviously why i do it but it's like also this weird thing where this person i've never met yeah. has watched 15 minutes of me and my gopro and now they're making like a big scale yeah. purchase yeah it does make me nervous like i, I saw it might have been chris fix um mm -hmm. his youtube channel has a disclaimer at the bottom of every video basically mm -hmm. says i'm just you know a guy in a camera doing yeah. my projects you take on all your risk and i i think about that a lot of times it's like all right did I really screw something up? Is somebody going to like screw up their car if they do exactly what I did? Yeah. So it's like, there is this kind of weird power that you have, whether it's good or bad Yeah. that if people take your advice, you're like, well, okay. Hopefully, I'd, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it was good and, and it worked out for you. <laughs> yeah. In one of my recent videos, the rotary life one, the most, uh, episode six, I think, um, I talk about it in the video and I'm like, people DM me all the time of like, Hey, my arc seven won't start. And I'm like, Hey man, I know just as little as you. I've spent this same amount of time on the forums as you. I've a lot of the times they've owned the cars longer than I have. I've only had a, oh geez, I've had an RX-7 for six years. Wow, that was a very sobering moment. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, but like you know, it, I I do feel like sometimes I do need a disclaimer of like, hey, I'm just a kid in my garage with Harbor Freight tools. You know, take this with a grain of salt. Yeah, it it's uh. You know, it's like you were saying, it's easy to pick on the bad things and, and mm -hmm. the bad comments. But I mean, there's been so many amazing experiences I've had. And it could be as simple as, you know, because the the Japanese market uh, FDs all came with back seats mm -hmm. uh, for insurance purposes. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're completely and not even usable yeah, unless terrible. you absolutely have no legs or something. Yeah. And uh, even at best, throwing a duffel bag back there and this stuff flies around. So it's I, not even good for that. Yeah. So I was convinced. I was like, I just need to put the bins back here because then yeah. I could do my battery relocation and store my premix and all that kind of stuff. So, like in my video, I made a comment about it, and then I had like three different people, you know, DM me and say, "Hey, I got a set of this. Or I got a set of that." So, like, you know, there's parts on this car from, you know, I got some parts from Arizona, from, from Virginia, from uh, Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of cool, but it's also like um, people are willing to help. Yeah. And 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 be constructive and give good advice or, I mean. You know, it's so I don't want to paint it as as bad and, and all that, but yeah, it's 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 cool. It's in the breadth, the reach that you have. Yeah, there's so many people out there that you don't even understand how far around the world they they come from and 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 seeing your content. So it's pretty cool. I'm surprised you didn't get more hate for removing the back seats. Actually, you know what I got? A lot of questions asking me if I'd sell the back seats. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, well, I was gonna say because like every time I do something to the RX-7. Or, you know, especially when it had the 12A in it, the smaller engine. Um, and I just, like, kind of got rid of it because it was blown up. It was blown up. Like, almost nothing was salvageable on that engine. But every – like, every once in a while, someone was like, I can't believe you get rid of that. I can't believe you get rid of that. Like, 12As are the better engine. It's so different. Like, why would you do that? And I'm like, the 13B is a better engine in almost every single yeah. way. You know, people who say that the 12A is better – yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but yeah, I'm surprised they didn't get on your case about the back seats. No, actually, I, th I think 
Well, so here's the thing. I mean, you got the 25 year rule rule, like even here locally, all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, Supras everywhere, mm -hmm. um, right hand drive. Mm -hmm. And when I bought this locally, I knew I, before I bought this, I should say, I knew of, um, two, uh, FDR X sevens in the area. One, a guy that I used to work with keeps in his garage, hardly ever drives it. I think it's partly because he's afraid of it breaking and he has, there's no mechanics specializing in rotaries around here. Um, other than uh, maybe the, the Mazda dealership. Mm -hmm. And then another guy that lives uh, a little South of here. So when I bought this, I, you know, I kind of felt like the third person, yeah, had an FD, yeah, yeah. but now, you know, mine being right hand drive, I think there's been two or three more right hand drives show up in the last couple months. And so I think it, it might be one of those things that, you know, people are bringing in these imports and, mm -hmm. and dealing with the same issues with the right hand drive and, and stuff like that. And I, cause it's, what's interesting is, um, there's a lot of places around the world that they couldn't get the bins. So I think they're like, right. I think I have people yeah. from, um, I think it's England that, oh, interesting. that, would, okay. that would message me a lot about yeah. the bins. Like where could they get a set of bins? Cause I think they also got the, um, the rear seats in, in, in their region. But, uh, but no, I, I would say if I got hate for anything other than where I got the car, it was, I took the Ganadors off the Ganador mirrors. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was the funny thing. And I'm not saying that I was naive about it, but it's like, okay. Ganador mirrors, whatever. And I didn't realize what the market for those are right now. I mean, a set of even fairly beat up ones could be a thousand bucks. No. And, uh, and, uh, these, as far as I can tell, our original authentics are stamped and all that stuff. And, um, they're just sitting in a box in my basement and everybody keeps asking me to sell them. But it's like, if, if, if I hadn't known that they were that popular, I might've even pop threw them in the trash or something. Cause I yeah. was like, I don't think I'll ever put these back on the car. And, um, so yeah, so that, that probably was the most controversial thing really I did, was taking off those Ganador mirrors for whatever reason. Huh? I, I would never have guessed that. Cause I remember those mirrors and like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you know, I'm sure they're cool to some people, but like, I, I was very indifferent on that. I don't hate them. I don't like yeah. love them though. So, yeah. So I, I actually got, um, these are from a left, the mirrors that are on there now are factory left-hand drive mirrors. Cause I got them cheap from a car that was being parted out, but because the, you're sitting in a different angle, right. And the, the way this is yeah. different. So what I actually found was a concave or convex, like a little stick on add on thing. No, it was, um, it's, um, it was like by Japan.com. So these oh. are actually lenses that would have been in a available for sale, but what they are is they're wide angle and because of their shape. And so it actually gives you enough of a viewing angle now that they, they work perfectly fine. So uh, these are, it's funny because I probably spent as much on those two lenses as I did the, the you know, the rest of those, <laughs> those mirror bodies. But, uh, so going off of that, that's a good segue. I want to get into it. This is your first right hand drive car, correct? Yes. At first one. Yes. How have you felt about that? So, so what happened, you, you kind of drove through my neighborhood when you, you came here today and it's a little curvy road. Mm -hmm. Well, when I got the notification from the, um, shipping company that the car was going to arrive, they refused to come into my neighborhood and, and arguably, I guess maybe a big semi truck would have a hard time getting yeah. around a little bit. It's a little bit of a jigsaw to get up yeah. here, but yeah. So he wanted me to meet him at the gate, you know, out, out at the front. And so he was parked on the side of the road and he had already backed it down off the car and it, I, they had told me that the battery kept dying and that's mm. been an issue that I've had with this car. When I got it was that there was always an electrical problem or something draining the battery. So, so yeah, ghost drain, yeah. whatever they call it. So yeah. he had gotten it jumped. And so he just left it there on the side of the road and I signed the ticket and he, he went on about his business. So here I am, um, sitting by the side of the road with his right hand drive. So I'm like, well, just get in and drive it. And so honestly, it felt way more natural. Like, yes, shifting gears to your left hand gets a second to used to get, right. getting used yeah, to it. Course. But I would say functionally, it, I got in and it didn't, you're yeah. just sitting on the different side of the car. You know, uh, the only thing that still gets you is the turn signal. Cause it's, I, I very recently, like as of like last year, I started, like I've been reviewing right hand drive cars for a while, but as of last year was the first time I didn't accidentally hit the wipers. Yeah. That was my first time. So, like, since last year, yeah. <laughs> I've been good about it, but it took a while to actually yeah. get used to it. But the uh, the positioning on the road takes them takes because like mm -hmm. you're so used to being, you know, I kind of use the lines of the hood and the roads on the line to kind you know kind of get that feel that you're centered on the road. And of course, there's a lot around Kentucky. They do the little rumble strips in the center. Yeah. So there's a lot of times I'll be like. Rrr. 
uh, you know, so, you know, getting, keeping your positioning. And of course, where this is a little bit wider, it's a little bit harder to gauge sometimes exactly where I mm -hmm. am versus the, the back end of the car. So no, I mean, it feels, I mean, literally it, it, it's, I was surprised how easy or, you know, didn't feel like a huge adjustment. And, um, of course, obviously going through drive throughs and everything else that like is a convenience in a left-hand drive car is not convenient in that car. And you get funny looks everywhere I go. I was going to say, and, what, have you got weird comments? Cause I get weird comments, even though it's just an RX seven, it's not even yeah. right-hand drive. Well, it's the, the awkward thing is, you know, human nature, right? And you know, when you pull up to a red light and I'm in the left lane and someone pulls up next to me and they're in the right lane, you know, it's like, we're right there. So yeah. it's like, I'll have people just start a conversation. Like, what kind of car is that? And it's just cause we're like right next to each other at yeah. the stoplight. But, um, I get second looks quite a bit. And of course you don't get the thumbs up all the time and, uh, people honking at me and stuff. So I think it's a spectacle just because the body kit and it's not something you see every day. So yeah. it, it, it attracts a ton of attention around here. My, uh, my favorite story is I was at the gas station one time and I got out and this, uh, guy i think he was in like a scion tc or something he looks at me and he goes uh is that is that thing ls swapped he, he looks at me he goes is it ls swapped and i didn't say a word and i just started pre-mixing it and he goes yeah. oh right on with the rotary and then left yeah. <laughs> i didn't yeah. say a word to him yeah. i just started pouring the oil and he was like oh yeah for sure yeah because it's uh i would say around here rotary knowledge is very little uh, mm. it, uh, more non-existent yeah. um there was a specialty shop i guess through the nineties, maybe early two thousands that specialize in rotary builds around here. But I don't know if you've ever heard the name Louis Shear. He's, he's an old sounds familiar. He was with Pettit racing. And okay. He was yeah. An old, old school rotary guy. Yeah. Well, he's lives where he used to live right around here. So oh, I, wow, okay. his son and I became good friends once I got, you know, once he connected the dots that I was here and I own mm -hmm. this car. And so, um, he and I became good friends. So it was like, I all of a sudden had this buddy that he and I could have these rotary talks and he was always like, Oh yeah. If you ever go to remove your clutch, make sure you disengage it. You know, like he used to give me all these tips cause yeah. he had, and I was like, this is what I need. I need yeah. someone around here that has these experiences. And so, um, that does, I think having not, a shop or anybody around here that really deals with them. There's just not many rotaries around here. There's a few FCs. Um, uh, Trevor, the guy I was just talking about his, his, he's got, he had, he hasn't a 10 anniversary, Ooh, and, okay. uh, but he, he's, he's, he moved away a couple years ago. But, um, so there's, there's a few FBs, few FCs around here. Um, like I said, there's probably, I would say now there's probably five or six FDs. Um, that may be a little bit more than that, maybe about 10 FDs that I know of. Uh, so there's, we're starting to see more yeah. of them out here. Um, I think that's a, another good thing that you hit on was just knowing someone who's been through it all and like having their guidance is more like more valuable than anything in the world. Yeah. Like I have my good friend, Adam, he like knows these cars inside and out. And so just having him not even like helping all the time, but like just like having him be there and like just going like, Oh, do that. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then, you know, it just, oh, it makes life so much easier. Yeah. And, and I am in no way claiming to be any kind of remotely close expert. In oh RX yeah. God, sevens. no, please don't ever contact me. <laughs> but I feel, but I feel like the old man and like all these kids I see getting their FDs and they're doing stuff. And like, there was one kid I saw the other day, like cold started, revved his, rev, revved his car out. And I was like, don't do that. Just don't do that. Just don't, don't ever do that. Let it warm up a little bit. So it's like I start. I'm starting to feel like this old man yeah. that like I'm not policing anybody, but it's like I have enough knowledge and experience now that I'm like, when people start making comments about stuff, I'm like, oh, it's this. It's probably that. You want. You probably want to look at that. Yeah. So it, I've become that guy. That you're like, gonna be the old man that comes down from the mountains once a month in his FD and he yeah. just speaks wisdom. Yeah. So one it, of these days, it's a it's a culture. It's everything. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it it and it's one of those things that when I got the car. I, I liked the car. I loved the car. I didn't quite know what I was getting into with the rotary stuff, but like I eat and breathe it now. Like, um, you know, I'm on the forums all the time. I'm on, you know, my Instagram is just flooded with friends and accounts that have RX sevens. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm spying on all the RX seven. You were talking about the Facebook groups in your video recently. I'm on there all the time. Like, oh, has anybody got anything for sale? Anybody got any questions? Yeah. You know, yeah. like I sold a turbo manifold to some kid out of California a couple months ago. And it was just like, we would never have connected if it hadn't been for the Facebook group. So honestly, I, I couldn't stress it enough in the video without making it sound like a Facebook ad yeah. of like, 
literally everything RX7 that I do is through Facebook. Like all the groups are super helpful. They're I think the just general RX7 group I think has like ninety thousand members, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, there will be someone that can answer your question on there. There's going to be like there's buy and sell trade groups. There's generation specific groups. Like it's yeah. Facebook has been the biggest tool um, in the positive sense of the word. Yeah. Um, when it comes to our acceptance stuff. Cause I, for, you know, I forget. So we all, it's common knowledge, or at least we think it's common knowledge that the Ford F one fifty is the vehicle that has been, it's the most produced vehicle mm-hmm. there has ever been. And I forget what the number is. And I, I think it's like F left-hand drive FDs that were sold in the United States. I want to say there was only about 30 or 40,000, something like that sent to the United States. Okay. It wasn't a big number. I think it was 90 overall. So that sounds right. Okay. And then I think around the world, that number was, you know, a little, you know, hundreds of thousands, yeah. you know, if you include all the right hand drive yeah, places. Yeah. So, so when you put that in perspective, if you added all the RX, there's more under, you know, than the FDs, but just right, speak, yeah. speaking to the FDs, you know, it's a very close knit tight group because, and, and you know, what percentage of those are still on the road? You I know? was just about to say, well, let's just be say 25% were crashed. Yeah. 25% are, you know, just in someone's garage forgotten about so those you're working with a couple thousand there yeah so those facebook groups connect all of these Mm -hmm. people that that you're you're just peppered all around the planet and yeah i was gonna say most of them are like worldwide like Mm -hmm. we get a lot of messages from new zealand australia um you know the big hot spots there not as much in the uk i've noticed um but i got someone wanted to buy the radio of my rx7 even though it was broken they just wanted the radio in hungary well or maybe it was turkey i mix those two up but um i would like this shipping would have been like 160 dollars, and i'm like this radio is broken and they're like that's okay we can't find them in our country and i'm like okay (laughs) so i think eventually I'll, i'll i'll end up doing that but Um, yeah, it's been really, really cool to see that. I used to do a show called rotary around the world and people would submit their cars and a lot, again, a lot of stuff from New Zealand, a couple from Japan, which was fun, but Japan doesn't seem as big on the more modern stuff. They're a lot old school stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a crazy ride. Yeah. So it, you know, it, it, you know, we talk about, you see the market prices for the cars going up and, oh you know, now that I've got the Datsun and, and really that was just an opportunity buy. It wasn't like I needed it, but yeah, we did. We totally skipped over the Datsun, which is right up above us. Yeah. But you, you just on the RX sevens, you see them going for, you know, pretty good condition going for 35, 40,000, whatever dollars these days. And it's like, it kind of brings a tear to my eye because it's like, I think about the initial investment of buying the car, which I got it for a price that. I probably could not have bought a running, driving, RX more or less complete RX7. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was right-hand drive um, for the price that I bought it, and then you know the I don't know fifteen-ish thousand dollars I've dumped into it after yeah. the fact. So like I'm already at the value, close to the value that I see these you know pretty nice cars going for, and I still haven't really gotten too deep into the motor and the. Uh, um, you know, the interior is complete. This, you know, I need to do the suspension, which is probably the worst thing on the car right now is the suspension. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the engine build could be 10000 bucks by itself if I really get into it. So, oh, yeah. That's like nothing. Yeah. That's, yeah. Because, like, I've got a, I've got a Haltech and I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got, got a bunch of elite. Um, i got elite upper and lower intake manifold. So I've, I've already invested a lot of money into that process, but I, I still – and I have a whole nother – um, set of housings and irons and rotors that I took from a motor a local guy was, was just selling. I don't know why he had it, but he's like, Hey, he just sold it to me. And, uh, it, it's an almost usable shape. There's probably a couple, the housings probably should be replaced. So I've been debating on just shipping that part, those parts off to get cleaned yeah. and, and, uh, do the port work and all that stuff. And then that way I can keep this engine intact and uh, not have so much downtime without having an engine. So I, it's one of those things, if you're going to be committed to that, you got to have the money and because it's going to cost all of it up front, you know. <laughs> it's not like yeah. I can do like, oh, I'll just do this and that, and then I can have a running engine. No, you got to do all new seals. you got to do all new everything. That, that's another common thing. Someone actually fought me in my Instagram DMs a little while ago, and they just wanted to do coolant seals. I'm like, all right, well, you're going to have to get a whole rebuild kit. And they're like, no, I just want to do the coolant seals. I can use the same apex seals, side seals. And I'm like, 
maybe you could but you shouldn't yeah like that's uh, that's like wearing your underwear three days in a row like you can (laughs) physically do it but you should not do it (laughs) so yeah it's it's not a cheap hobby i always i used to always tell my parents i'm like at least i'm not into drugs and now (laughs) i'm like it probably would have been cheaper at this point (laughs) yes even even uh yeah it's uh, it's uh i mean anything Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I was talking about my, uh, my local Mazda dealers where one of the guys I can get there, he can get me parts. And when I had gotten the new, uh, replacing the seats in this car, yeah. the, uh, the, the bolts that mounted the, the seat rails to the floor were pretty crody. And so I was like, I'm just going to replace them. And I got the part number cause they're, um, I don't know. They, I couldn't just go to the hardware store kind of thing. And, uh, I th- gosh, I want to say one bolt was like $16. Yeah. And I had to have eight of them or whatever, yeah. you know. So it and it's just like it just seems like it comes with the the territory. It's not yeah. not that that bolt specifically costs sixteen dollars. It's just oh, it's a Mazda RX seven. Uh, there's only a few of these left and stuff like that. So yeah, it, the expense of it's been that's been the hardest thing that it has been to adjust because like the Datsun, I mean, I can still go down the you know the bolts and hardware for that are easy to find and it's not uh, yeah um, super expensive. So that's that's been kind of nice. It makes my BMW seem cheap. That that the RX-7 <laughs> makes my BMW seem cheap. I We always talk about because I have a couple of friends with FDs, and we say everything is $300. Everything is $300. Everything for a first gen is 100 bucks. Everything for a second gen is 200 bucks, mm-hmm. And everything for a third gen is at least, like, starting price of $300. Mm-hmm. Um, like, radiators and, and literally everything is $300. Yeah. It's uh, – don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i don't know if we'll be able to post this uh podcast yeah no. yeah no if i told my parents and my girlfriend the real amount of money i'm spending um it's uh it wouldn't be good yeah i'd, I'd be single and probably kicked out honestly yeah the sad thing is when you do see something pop up on the marketplaces and it's in good shape and it's like 600 bucks you're like that's a good price for that actually <laughs> Let me check a couple numbers here. Yeah. Let me check a couple accounts. Yeah. But also people don't understand that like those parts won't come back up again. Like I I found my dream set of wheels and I'm like, they're a little pricey, you know, that's a little up there, which I actually ended up finding a set of them. But, you know, I hemmed and hawed, sold in like an hour. And then it took two more years to find these wheels. Yeah. And they're not even the right color. I have to somehow get them like machined to be the right color. Yeah. So it's just like, with this stuff, you kind of have to jump on it now, which sucks, but. Yeah. So. Oh, RX-7s. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah, anytime. Uh, where can people find you? Well, my YouTube channel at Icon Garage. I'm on Instagram at The Icon Garage. There's a, a New York parking garage that has Icon Garage really? on Instagram. Really? We're going to sue. And then you can find me on Facebook there as well. So that's usually the three places. I've got in Twitter and all the other ones, but I – normally don't yeah. pay too much attention to this. I, I don't really I, I didn't really fall in love with twitter i have yeah. a personal one but like it's just yeah. yeah so please go check out matthew's videos the icon garage really really cool stuff you can see the continuation of the bs for build rx7 which i think is so cool um i'm so happy that it's here it's driving it's in a lot better shape than it was yeah um and that's the whole goal with the rx7s is to make them better than how you found them right right and there's not been a lot of content in the last year but I literally have a mountain of parts and we'll be getting back into it. And that's the thing I want to, you know, I think about my daughter one day and whatever their culture and life is going to be then. And Mm -hmm. like, this will be like the classic, right? Yeah. By the time she's old enough to see that. And so I want to, you know, I want to continue this on and and make sure that it, it lives on and people understand it and all that stuff too. Well, cool. Thanks so much for listening and uh, we'll see you next episode. Take care.